Rumors about the Galaxy S24 Ultra have been swirling around for months now, and all of the stuff we've been hearing so far sounds suspiciously familiar. Because if the rumors are true, the Galaxy S24 Ultra might be taking a surprising number of cues from the iPhone 15 Pro. But what features does Samsung have in mind, and more importantly, can they implement them as well as Apple did on the iPhone? First and foremost, let's talk about one of the most notable upgrades to the iPhone 15, the titanium build. This was a pretty big deal for Apple because it solved a lot of the weight complaints that people had about the past iPhone Pros. By switching to titanium, Apple was able to shave off about 20 grams. Now that's not a massive difference, at least on paper, but once you're actually holding it in your hand, it's definitely a lot more noticeable. And while Samsung is planning to follow suit on the Galaxy S24 Ultra, it might not be as beneficial as you think. According to current rumors about the Galaxy S24 Ultra, a titanium build would technically make it lighter, but only about by one gram. Yeah, one gram. Now keep in mind, when Apple came out with their own titanium build, they really switched from stainless steel to titanium, but with Samsung, they'll be switching from aluminum. So it Samsung, you're pretty much just switching from one lightweight metal to another. Aside from this, Apple really went all in on trying to give the iPhone Pro a solid camera upgrade, and for the first time in a really long time, we got an actual proper upgrade for the zoom cameras. But apparently, Samsung might also be following suit and giving a major upgrade for their own zoom cameras. Instead of using the normal 12 megapixel 3x zoom lenses that they've used in the past, they'll instead be switching it out for a 50 megapixel camera, and this will supposedly allow the ultra space zoom to be extended from 100 times to 150 times. Now if there's one thing that Samsung is really focused on on their phones for years at this point, and something that they've kind of become known for on their phones is their displays. They've always tried to make sure that they've always had the most colorful and the brightest displays on any flagship smartphone out in the market right now. But Apple did technically beat them out in the brightness department this year. The 15 Pro is capable of reaching up to 2000 nits peak brightness, while the S23 Ultra is only able to go up to 1750. That being said, Samsung is supposedly planning to beat Apple again this year with a 2500 nit display. Now obviously you probably wouldn't use displays this bright indoors and they're not really made for that kind of thing, but something like this would definitely be a lot more useful outdoors. And considering how reviewers have found the iPhone 15 Pro to be a lot more pleasing to use outdoors than before, with its 2000 nit display, then a 2500 nit display would be a nice bump up from that, and also a little bit of a reassurance. But as far as displays go, that's not the only way Samsung will be imitating or, in other cases, trying to beat out Apple this year. Lately, rumors have been swirling around of the S24 Ultra increasing in width from 78.1 millimeters to 79 millimeters, and people have speculated that this may actually be because Samsung is going to be switching from a curved display like it has on past models to a flat display. This would make sense considering that the S23 Ultra had less of a curve than the 22 Ultra, and considering that it's less prone to accidental touches as well as breaking when you drop it, this would be a pretty significant upgrade. Now one feature that Apple introduced a couple years ago with the iPhone 14 Pro is satellite connectivity, and it's something that they've expanded on with the iPhone 15 Pro. Effectively, it would let people get some kind of assistance from pretty much anywhere, even if you don't have a cell signal. After Samsung announced the Galaxy S23, they also announced that they too were working on satellite connectivity, and there have been rumors that they might actually bring it to the S24 Ultra this year. But there are a couple of caveats to this. First off, Samsung said that the new modems for satellite connectivity would be directly integrated with their Exynos chipsets, which are their own custom-built chips, kind of similar to Apple's A-series chips for the iPhone. But the thing is, as we'll discuss in a minute, Samsung may not be using their Exynos chips on the Galaxy S24s this year. And second of all, even if they did implement this, they would also need to partner with some kind of satellite provider in order to provide this feature. Apple, for example, partnered with Globalstar, and Samsung would probably need to do something similar if they want to add this feature as well. Now, something that Apple was especially proud of this year was the A17 Pro chip that they put in the iPhone 15 Pros. Effectively, it would allow for things like better gaming experiences, as well as hardware-accelerated ray tracing. The thing is, Samsung's own in-house chips haven't really been the most well-received by customers. The thing is, they're not quite as powerful or as battery efficient as the Qualcomm chips that are used in the US version. That being said, the Galaxy S23 was the first to skip out on Samsung's chips, and if you live outside the US, you may be happy to know that Samsung is potentially planning to move forward with this for the S24s as well. Now shifting gears a bit, one of the more controversial decisions made was dropping the 128GB model 
on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Effectively, this raised the base price from $1099 to $1199, which is technically the same price as the 14 Pro Max with the same storage option, but it also means that the base price is a bit more than it was last year thanks to the lack of a cheaper option. That being said, Samsung also starts at $1200 for a 256GB model, and if the rumors are true, not only would Samsung be introducing a 2TB model with the S24 Ultra, but they'd also be releasing a 128GB model, which could go one of two ways. On one hand, Samsung could introduce the 128GB model as a more affordable option to make it a bit more accessible to people, while still keeping the 256GB storage option at $1200. But on the other hand, Samsung could also be dropping that storage option for the $1200 version, in other words, they may end up selling the $1,200 version with 120 gigabytes of storage. And if they did that, that probably wouldn't go over quite as well. But I think one of the points that can be brought up from all this is that both Apple and Samsung are kind of starting to get a bit more aggressive in their competition with each other. Because when Apple announced the iPhone 15 Pro lineup, they made it pretty clear that they wanted to take the Pros in a bit of a different direction. And a lot of the things that Samsung's trying to compete with is tied to this sort of new vision that Apple has for the iPhone. If you want to learn more about that, be sure to go check out this video next right here, and I'll see you over there. Adios.